I want to thank you all for coming today um, to our 21st Athena Award, St. Paul Area Athena Awards Banquet. At this time, I'd like to recognize, and if they would stand, please, the members of the committee that work with me to prepare this banquet. So members of the committee, please stand. We are a volunteer 501c3 committee, which means we are a nonprofit, and donations to us are tax deductible. Remember, it's tax day today. Think about that for next year. And if you look on the back of your program, I'd like to, to just have you recognize our sponsors, our individual sponsors. Uh, and the prom center who has helped us and then several that we do special thanks who give us uh, assistance in other ways than uh, strictly monetary donations. If any of you are interested, my name and phone number is on the back of the program. You're welcome to contact me if you're interested in volunteering. We do have a couple former winner's parents on the, on the committee. We do also have a former winner on our committee. So you're welcome to join us. We meet about five times a year to, for breakfast to prepare uh, for today. At this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Our speaker today is Lynette Showquist. In women and girls sports, the demarcation line for milestones is often Title IX. Having none of the opportunities of Title IX in high school because she graduated, like me, before 1971, she still managed to carve out quite a career in sports. She played basketball, softball, and volleyball at a small two-year school before she, along with her twin sister, entered the unlikely occupation of women's professional basketball, the All-American Redheads. You don't look too red anymore, Lynette. <laughs> they, they were a barnstorming cross-country phenomena from 1936 to 1986. The, so the Soquist twins, also known as the Minnesota twins, were proud of their part in the mid-70s. Mid Her pro basketball days didn't end there. In 1978, the Women's Pro Basketball League was formed, and she was proudly made on the roster of the Minnesota franchise called the Minnesota Phillies. Without the deep pockets of the NBA, the fledgling league only lasted until 1981. So she finished her career as a player, coach, and public relations director. But that's another story, she says. She only recently has, <clears throat> only recently has the sports world recognized these early ventures of women's pro sports. In two, two, 2011, the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame honored the Redheads by declaring them trailblazers of the game and created a unique display in their honor in Knoxville, Tennessee. This was an addition to the, a de, to a display to the Redheads at the inaugural opening of the hall in 1999. Not to be outdone, the Naismith Hall of Fame induced, excuse me, inducted the All-American Redheads into the class of 2012. Only the second team to be inducted and the first women's team to be inducted. Her passion for basketball and all women sports has led her to the position she cherishes for the past 13 years. She's the radio broadcast analyst for the Gophers women basketball. 
always anxious to make a difference and help young girls accomplish their dreams, our, M our speaker today is Lynette Showquist. Thank you. Thank you all. Can you hear me, number one? Maybe I need to do this. Thank you all. I am so happy to be here. I want to thank Deanne once again for the gracious invitation to come here. I know what a special and wonderful celebration this is. My congratulations to each and every one of the Athena Award winners. Congratulations. You've done great things in order to receive this honor. It's really a thrill for me to be here because it's a chance to meet you, each one of you, as an Athena Award winner. And you know what? I get to hear your story, your story. Deanne probably went on a little long about my story. I'm anxious to hear your stories. We have just made it through March Madness. Wow. Randy and I were talking a little bit about it. Deanne and I were talking a little bit about it. March Madness, what does that mean? Wow brackets to fill out, so many tournaments to watch, to attend, and to play, as it were, and of course, even cheer on teams. But what else was celebrated in the month of March? Any ideas? March is Women's History Month. How many of you are history buffs? Anyone? Anyone, uh, anyone going to major in history? or minor in history. How about sports trivia? Any trivia champs out there, sports trivia? None? Well, buckle up your seats, ladies and gentlemen, or you're gonna find out some things. How many of you are aware of women's sports history? Have you read any biographies? Seen any movies? Maybe followed anybody on Twitter? That was for Randy. Have you thought about it? Do names like Billie Jean King, Joan Joyce, Wilma Rudolph, Peggy Fleming, Althea Gibson, Mary Lou Retton, Cindy Nelson, and Lindsay Whalen, any of them mean anything to you? It should be apparent that you have been writing your own chapter of sports history. The training, the practices, the competitions, the championships, the friendships, all the stories surrounding those events in your life have become part of your sports history. We will hear some specifics today about your sports history as you are introduced. And quite frankly, we'll marvel at all that you've been able to accomplish so far in your young life. Women's sports history, sometimes underappreciated, often underreported. <laughs> Nevertheless, important to all of us who have known the thrill of sports competition. It may be difficult to find recorded information regarding female athletes before the beginning of the modern Olympics. And even the revival of the Olympics did not allow women to participate. They were to be spectators and cheer people on. However, in that first game of the modern Olympics, in Athens, in 1896, legend has it, one female runner, a Greek woman named Melpomene, wanted to run in the marathon. Well, the organizers refused her request to enter the race. She had already trained to run, so she decided she would run. So she ran anyway, starting behind the 25 male participants and completing the race in four and a half hours. Probably not bad for 1896. As an, official, as an unofficial entrant, she was excluded from the ceremonial finish afforded the other marathon runners inside the stadium. So she ran her final lap alone around the outside of the stadium. 
By the second Olympiad in 1900, women could participate in golf and tennis. It was not until the 1908 London Games that the Olympic Committee officially recognized women's events as part of the sports gathering. The US, however, did not send any women to the 1908 Olympics. Why, you ask? Well, the American Olympic Committee opposed American women participating in events which the women did not wear long skirts. So no women went to represent the US. In the US during that time, different philosophies obviously regarding women and sports competition ruled the day. Women should participate in sports, but not so much compete in sports. There were some very interesting theories regarding women and the effect of sports and competition on their bodies. By 1932, one American woman emerged as an Olympic superstar and perhaps the greatest female athlete America has known. Anybody guess who it is? Babe Diedrichsen. She won three track and field medals in Los Angeles. Following those Olympics, she played basketball on a barnstorming team, not the All-American Redheads. And then along with our own, Minnesota's own Patty Berg, played professional golf in the newly founded LPGA. During World War II, women entered the workforce as never before to fill the positions left by men who went off to war. They also began to play baseball in the All-American All Girls Baseball League, founded by Chicago Cubs owner Philip Wrigley. Have any of you seen the movie League of Their Own? As more women became involved in sports, reporting and recording their endeavors started to gain some traction. The most influential piece of legislation to affect women's athletics came on June 23rd, 1972, when President Nixon signed into law the Education Amendments of 1972. Included in those amendments was Title IX, a provision outlawing sex discrimination in education. Title IX had an immediate and enormous impact on high school sports programs. Participation rates for high school girls jumped approximately 616 percent between 1971, the year I graduated, and 1982. Dramatic changes in girls' and women's sports have been realized and recorded all thanks to Title IX. You will often hear of sports stories of women who are referred to as pre-Title IX because it was such a major milestone in women's sports history. As I've said, I graduated from high school in 1971. I like to say it was when, it was before actually that the basketball was round. So it, it was a while ago. In high school, my options were GAA, Girls Athletic Association, or cheerleading. Believe me, it was a very different time. There were throngs of female athletes who longed for competitive sports. You can find history of women's sports. I brought a couple of examples with me. Here's one book, Outstanding Women Athletes and Who They Are and How They Influence Sports in America. Another one, you may recognize the author of this one. It's Daughters of the Game by Marion Bemis Johnson and Dorothy McIntyre, former associate director of the high school league. Their book actually chronicles the amazing history of girls' high school basketball in Minnesota from 1891, yes that's right, 1891 to 1942. In another book, Sum It Up by Pat Summit, great women's basketball coach. Great reading. So there are samples of written sports history. All of your stories are important. All have lessons and inspiration for others. The recorded history and oral history of girls and women's sports is vital to the continued growth and development of women's sports. I encourage you to appreciate women's sports history. Know what has happened in the past 
as you continue to write new chapters of your own sports history. Part of my sports history has been written through the All-American Redheads, the Minnesota Phillies, and now I'm fortunate to broadcast history as it happens for Golden Gopher women's basketball. Be proud of your story. Acknowledge the people that have provided the opportunities for you and helped you along the way. Women's sports history is intriguing, interesting, and educational. Your contrib contribution to it is noted and celebrated today. Many of you will continue to write new chapters of sports history as you continue your competition in college or beyond. The great news with Title IX is girls and women's sports history can continue and its history can be recorded. Here's my words of advice to you today. Honor the past, celebrate the present, and promote the future. Women's sports history in Minnesota, you are a part of it now. Congratulations. Tell I didn't play basketball. <laughs> like her, I could have been a cheerleader, not at this weight at high school, but I could have been a cheerleader and I got to play GAA because I only lived about half a mile from the high school so I could go, come and go pretty easily. Today, our MC who will introduce us to each of our winners today is Randy Shaver. Randy joined CARE 11 in 1983 as a sports reporter. He was named the e Evening News co-anchor <coughs> with Julie Nelson in 2012. Randy was the sports director of CARE 11 from 1994 to 2012. And I'm gonna add this to his bio. Lynette joked about you know, the reporting for women's sports is not the same. I have to say, Randy has done a good job with, of that with his CARE 11 Athlete of the Week. He's been doing that since when, Randy? Since 1983. 1983, so, you know, he. <laughs> Randy has won a regional and a national Edward R. Murrow Award for sports reporting in 2006, and he was inducted into the Minnesota Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 2004. He's a member of the Cedar Rapids Jefferson High School Hall of Fame in both football and track. Randy also has, co has been a head co freshman football coach and a youth traveling basketball coach. Let us welcome Randy Shaver. Thank you very much. It is my honor to introduce each of the winners today. And uh, we ask that you uh, come up, up on the stage. I'll get a chance to embarrass you for a little bit. And then you can go sit down. And then you'll get uh, a very nice plaque. So we'll uh, start with Colleen Moore from Apple Valley. Colleen, the captain and twice MVP for volleyball, four letter winner, two all conference and honorable mention. Softball, she's the captain, won the MVP last year, holds four letters, all conference and honorable mention. Shares her sports talent as a youth coach as well as volunteering uh, throughout her uh, career at Apple Valley, Feed My Starving Children, Reading in Schools, just a few of the examples. Colleen is undecided right now on her post high school plans. Colleen Moore from Apple Valley. Next up is Jessica Blaisflug from Centennial, four sport athlete, cross country, state participant, captain, most valuable runner twice. Winter sport is hockey, four time letter winner. Team was section five AA runner up and conference champions. She won the Hobie Baker Character Award. Currently captain of the track and field team, most valuable freshman. Uh, award winner, two most valuable relay runner awards and three-time letter winner. Lastly, one letter and most improved in swimming and diving. Her other school activities include she's the senior class vice president, yearbook editor, National Honor Society, 
peer leading and mentor programs, scholastically earned an all state academic, three academic letters, and four. Uh, years on the A honor roll. She will run track and cross country at Mankato State University where she will study communications disorders. Jessica Baseflug from Centennial. <laughs> Sarah Green from Chisago Lakes, a Miss Basketball nominee and a participant in the All-Star Game, 1,000 points scored, two-time captain. In track, holds the school record in the 800 meters. Also in the 4 by 400 meter relay and state participant in that race. Her cross country accomplishments include one letter, all conference and all state academic. She is part of Link Crew and National Honor Society in the community, works with elementary students in reading, academic awards and physical education and student of the month as well. Sarah wants to major in pre-med and play basketball, right now undecided on which college to go to. Sarah Green from Chisago Lakes. <laughs> Rachel Wall from Egan was on the state champion soccer team last fall with her team being section and conference champions and ranked eighth nationally, two-time captain, a rookie of the year award winner as well. She was also on the all tournament team. Hockey team was a twice a state participant earning fifth place one year in section and conference champions. In track, a state participant in the four, four by 200 meter relay, currently captain of the team as well, a four time letter winner and a member of the National Honor Society and Link Crew. Her volunteering includes Sunday school teaching and elementary school tutor, top 20% of her class. She will play soccer at Michigan Tech and study pre-health biology. Rachel Wall from Egan High School. <laughs> Emily Betts from Eastridge went to state five times in cross country, two times section champion, won the Nike regional second and third team honors. Other honors include team captain and uh, voted two time hardest worker. In Nordic skiing, she holds Nordic skiing, she holds three letters. She was a three-time state qualifier and conference champion in track and three-time letter winner. Her school activities consist of Link Crew, National Honor Society, and Key Club. In the community, she has been an American Cancer Society Relay for Life volunteer for many years and team captain for four years. In addition, she works with East Metro Miracle League, Students Today, Leaders Tomorrow, Pay It Forward, Service Tour, Mission Trips, St. Paul Triathlon, and the list goes on. Scholastically, she has been on the A honor roll every semester, academic all-state and academic letters every year. Right now, she's uh, planning to run track and cross country for the University of Minnesota. She's still undecided as to what to study. Emily Betts from Eastridge High School. <laughs> Madison Giebert from Eastview was the leading scorer in Eastview basketball girls history, a 2,000 point score, earning Miss Basketball, Pioneer Press Player of the Year, Breakdown Player of the Year, Gatorade Player of the Year, four-time letter winner, and she holds uh, multiple school records. She played two years of softball. Within the community, she participates with Feed by Starving Children, Kindergarten Reader, and Blanket Making for Hospice Patients. Academically, holds three academic letters and an all-state academic uh, winner as well. Madison has a basketball scholarship to South Dakota State University, where she plans to study elementary education. Madison Giebert from Eastview High School. Kirsten Crocky from Farmington is the captain of the swimming team, earning six, time, six letters, five-time all-conference, two all-state, two MVP awards, hardest worker award, rookie of the year award, five-time state meet participant, member of the captain's council and Tiger Leadership Club, holds academic letters and was an academic all-American. She will swim for the University of Nebraska, Omaha, and plans to study biotechnology. Kirsten Crocky from Farmington High School. Raquel Wolke, Wolk from uh, Forest Lake won All-American honors since ninth grade in cross-country skiing. First at state in the Classic as a freshman and senior and seventh as a junior. Holds six letters in that sport. In swimming, qualified for sections three times, made it to the finals, earning three letters. In track, four-time letter winner, four-time all-conference and one all-state award. Ran cross country this past fall, earned a letter in that as well, made it to the state meet, but then got food poisoning and couldn't run. 
that's a bummer <laughs> to work that hard in that sport and then not get a chance to run. Member of the National Honor Society with four academic letters, she will pursue, pursue nursing at the University of New Hampshire. Raquel Wolk from Forest Lake. <laughs> Elizabeth Kimmis from Hastings made five state tournament appearances in adaptive soccer PI with her team earning three seconds, a third and a fifth, four-year captain. An adaptive hockey PI was a four-time captain. The team made four state tournaments with three seconds and a fourth place, earned the Brick Wall Award, Player of the Year, and made most saves. She was once again a four-time captain on the adaptive softball team. Team made four state appearances with a second and three fifth places, four-time letter winner in that sport. She participates in Youth First Planning Council. She is on the AB Honor Roll. Elizabeth will major in early childhood education at UW-Whitewater, where she will play wheelchair basketball. Elizabeth Kimmis from Hastings High School. Tania Johnson from Henry Sibley is the school track record holder in the 4x400 meter relay, captain, MVP, and state participant, four-time letter winner, most improved in volleyball with one letter in her winter sport of basketball, captain, most improved in four letters in that sport as well. Member of Link Crew and Page Warriors in the school book club. In the community, she is a common bond tutor and volunteer for Feed My Starving Children, has earned academic excellence awards for two years. Tania will attend the University of Missouri to pursue a health science degree to become a physical therapist. Tania Johnson from Henry Sibley High School. <laughs> Mary Hynex from Irondale is MVP and captain of the cross country team, five time letter winner, four time all conference. Honorable mention, she is a state participant in Nordic skiing, was the team captain, five-time letter winner, also named Rookie of the Year for track, Rookie of the Year, earning her four letters and four-time all-conference, a peer mentor and peer tutor and a member of the National Honor Society, Society, Diva Dozen and Concert Choir. Her volunteer activities include working with the native wetland and native prairie restoration. She's an AP scholar with distinction, holds five academic all-state, five spotlight on scholarship, and two academic excellence awards. She plans to attend the University of St. Thomas and study accounting. Mary Hynix from Irondale High School. <laughs> Logan Dobratz from Lakeville North is the second, uh, listed second in the top 200 for the Minnesota Lacrosse Hub and holds honorable mention All-American and U.S. All-Academics. She's a two-year captain, five-time letter winner, All-State MVP in midfield and MVP, captain of the basketball team, earning three letters. Her other school activities are numerous, holds a letter in varsity band and marched in the Fiesta Bowl parade. Additionally, a member of Student Council, National Honor Society, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Homecoming Court, Advanced Business Academy, class delegate in English and Spanish, and one of 20 seniors selected as a super fan. What does that mean? Um, like our, uh, leader, of the, uh, leader of the fans. Of the fans. <laughs> That's great, that's awesome. Outside of school, made some mission trips, a youth sports assistant coach in basketball and lacrosse. Earned several departmental scholastic awards by being in the top 2% in various subjects. Logan has a partial athletic scholarship to play lacrosse at Marquette University where she will double major in secondary education and Spanish. Logan Dobratz from Lakeville North High School. Caroline Slat Slattery from Lakeville South was on the second and third place state cross country teams in eighth and ninth grade, received all conference honorable mention. She participated in the state tournament, earned three letters in Nordic skiing, track and field, earned five letters in three-time all-conference and three-time all-state. She participated in the state tournament four times, earning a first, second, and sixth place finish in the high jump. She's a member of the National Honor Society and faith clubs. Outside of school, she has worked with the Trinity Care Center youth group and making canvas art for Feed My Starving Children. She holds eight academic All-State awards and is an AP Scholar Award winner. She will run track and field at the University of Kansas, and right now she is undecided on what she will study. Caroline Slatery from Lakeville South. 
Hannah Shands from Matamidae was part of the three-time state tournament tennis team that took third. Her team was also four-time conference champion. She took fifth place in state in doubles, two-time captain of that team, member, uh, team member, and uh, she is the team leader, rather, in ground balls caused turnovers in lacrosse, defensive MVP, rookie of the year, earning five letters in that sport, high school student ambassador and member of the service project club, Using her athletic ability, she volunteers with youth lacrosse, additionally volunteers at her church with, and also with Feed My Starving Children. Academically, she's on the honor roll, and Hannah will play D1 lacrosse at Winthrop University. She also is undecided as to what she will study. Hannah Shands from Matamidai High School. Jacqueline Volkert from Moundsview is a candidate for Miss Basketball, holds an MVP, four letters, two all-conference, and two-time honorable mention, was team captain as well, voted MVP and Offensive Player of the Year in Volleyball with one letter in all-conference. She made uh, all-section, all-conference, and honorable mention in Softball, earning four letters, participates in Cyber Squad, Mustang Mentors, and National Honor Society. She received academic letters for every season of every sport. Jacqueline is looking at pre-pharmacy or accounting and plans to attend Minnesota State Moorhead. Jacqueline Volker from Moundsview High School. <laughs> Katie Trunk from North Branch participated in four sports and volleyball holds three letters and two all-conference and gymnastics, four letters, four all-conference and two-time all-state. Softball has two letters. In track, she holds one letter and all-conference honorable mention. Her school activities include trap shooting, Really? Yeah. Are you good? No, okay. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> Link Crew, National Honor Society, and Band. She ushers at her church, help and donated at the school blood drive, works with Feed My Starving Children. She was the AAA winner with academic letters and academic all-conference honors. She's going to attend Gustavus Adolphus and plans to major in athletic training. Katie Trunk from North Branch High School. Maddie Frick from North. Maddie was on the All Pioneer Press team in soccer, Athlete of the Week by the Pioneer Press. She was three-year uh, captain, five-time letter winner, five All-Conference and one-time All-State. Volunteer activities include soccer clinics and highway cleanup, academic letters. She was on the A honor roll uh, all four years in high school. Maddie will, who are you waving to? Who's that? <laughs> Maddie, is that your, oh, are those your parents? Yeah. yeah. They got the cheap seats back there, didn't they? <laughs> wow. Maddie will attend DePaul University to play soccer and she'll major in business. Maddie Frick from North. <laughs> Annie Williams from Park, a Miss Soccer finalist and two-time Star Tribune and Pioneer Press first team and all-region team. Two-time captain, four-time letter winner, captain of the basketball team, receiving four letters, all-conference and honorable mention, holds one letter in lacrosse, member, uh, she's a member in Leaders of the Pack, Link Crew, and Lunch with the Wolf Pack, and is a student teacher. Her church activities include youth leadership. She's made four mission trips and also a religion teacher. In addition, she mentors youth basketball and soccer players. She is a four-year A honor roll student. Annie will play soccer at South Dakota State University and she will major in business. Annie Williams from Park High School. <laughs> Samantha Bay from Randolph was twice MVP of the volleyball team, earning four letters, two all conference and honorable mention. For basketball, broke the school record by getting 39 points in one game, 496, holy mackerel, she's tall, 496 in a season. You have to be the tallest athlete at Randolph High School. Yes, that's what I thought. She was twice MVP. She was in the school play and FFA. She coaches in the Junior Olympic program, participates in Friends of Randolph Scholars. She's also a part of uh, Toys for Tots program as well. She holds academic all-conference and achievement awards. She will attend Winona State. She's undecided on what she will study. Samantha Bay from Randolph High School. <laughs> Ellie Bra from Rosemount, 
Ellie won the Coach's Award, Captain in Volleyball, additionally Most Improved, Two-Year Outstanding Academic Athlete with three letters won, Captain of the Basketball Team, Four Outstanding Academic Athlete Awards, Four-Time Defensive MVP. After an injury last year, she uh, was back in track, is back in track this season. She earned three letters, an all-conference and leadership award, holds a top 10 all-time Rosemount record in the 100-meter hurdles, 300-meter hurdles, 4 by 200 meter relay, 4 by 100 meter relay, and was the third place uh, section, and, and was uh, finished third in the section twice. Member of the choir, concert choir, National Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. Community involvement includes her church, Be My Starving Children, sharing and caring hands, and working with youth basketball and volleyball camps. She's currently ranked number one in her senior class and was in the top 10 every other year. She is an AP scholar, just nominated for Language Arts Student of the Year. Ellie will attend the University of Minnesota. She will uh, College of Biological Sciences and hopes to major in biology. Ellie Vra from Rosemount High School. Monica Burrich from Roseville was the Pioneer Press Volleyball Player of the Year and All-American. She was a member of the 2014 State All-Tournament team, holds four letters in that sport, two-time All-State, two-time Academic All-State. For basketball, she will play in the All-Star Game. <laughs> man, it just sucks getting old. I feel like I'm a hunched over old man. <laughs> Member of the Star Tribune and Pioneer Press All-Star teams and a Miss Basketball finalist earned four letters in that sport in track, two-time state participant, four-time letter winner, three-time All-Conference Honorable Mention, and two-time Academic All-State, holds three academic letters. She is an A honor roll student. Monica will play basketball at the University of Colorado. Right now, she's undecided on what she will study. Monica Burrich from Roseville High School. Katie Atkins from Simley won the Golden Boot and Spartan Awards in soccer, two-time captain, four-time letter winner. In basketball, she was captain, having earned four letters in that sport, all-conference, all-state academic, and most improved. For track, she is a jumper, holding the second-place school record in the triple jump and top 10 in the long jump, a member of National Honor Society. Her volunteer activities include Invergrove Heights, Days uh, Parade, Food Drive, Soccer Camp, Art for Africa, Feed My Starving Children, Relay for Life, and she's a, been a volunteer coordinator for traveling basketball tournaments, which is not an easy job. She's an AP scholar with honors and holds four academic letters. Katie will attend the Carlson School of Management at the University of Minnesota. Katie Atkins from Simley High School. Anna Ray Barlow from South St. Paul, captain MVP of the soccer team, five-time letter winner, all-conference, all-conference honorable mention, and all-state. She was a member of the all-tournament team. For hockey, a member of the all-tournament team this year. Captain, earned six letters in this sport. She is the secretary of the student council and a member of National Honor Society and Diversity Leadership. She volunteers at the VA hospital. Academically, she is a, a gold honor roll student all four years in high school and student of the trimester. I'm not really sure what that means, but I'm sure that's pretty cool. <laughs> Anna will play hockey for the Gophers and hopes to major in physiology or biomedical engineering. Anna Ray Barlow from South St. Paul. Megan Weaver, uh, Megan Weaver from Stillwater, MVP and captain in Nordic skiing, earned five letters in that sport, four-time All-Conference, two-time All-State, five-time section qualifier, being a two-time finalist, a medalist in swimming and diving, holds five letters, an academic All-American. Synchronized swimming accomplishments include being in the top eight in the state for two years and two letters. For track and field, she has won three letters in that sport. Member of the pep band, concert wind symphony and National Honor Society. Volunteers at a nursing home. She's done a mission trip to Mexico. In addition to her sports letters, she holds academic letters as well. Megan hopes to continue to ski and run at Gustavus and plans to study environmental science. Megan Weaver from Stillwater High School.
Elizabeth Tabeka from Tartan won the Hobie Baker Award in Hockey, four-time MVP, five-time letter winner, four-time all-conference and captain. She helped organize and develop the girls lacrosse program at Tartan, will be the captain for the third year in a row. Won two letters in that sport in swimming, most improved with three letters. <laughs> Getting awful close. Am I supposed to be in the picture or just keep reading? Uh, she's a link leader and member of DECA in the community. She coached her younger sister's hockey team. How'd your younger sister's team do, by the way? Uh, pretty good. You're a pretty good coach? I don't know. Ask her. <laughs> I don't know. Ask her. <laughs> she works with Relay for Life. She holds two academic letters on the honor roll, attended the Metro East Leadership Conference. Elizabeth will play hockey at the University of St. Thomas. She plans to study op optimum. Atometry, thank you. Easy for me to say. Elizabeth Tabeka from Tartan High School. All right, Katie, I hope I get this right. Katie Zoboroski from White Bear Lake. That's a tough one. Katie, captain of all her teams, a, a state runner up, the 2012 soccer team, conference champion, three time letter winner, basketball team, state participant. Conference champion, earned defensive MVP in four letters, track team, section champ, three-time letter winner. She was named Rookie of the Year in that sport. Her school activities include Chemistry Club, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, National Honor Society, and Leadership Academy. She teaches Sunday school. She's a resident assistant at a memory care center. That's pretty cool. And coaches youth basketball. She won the XL Award and the Student of the Month and is 10th in her class. Katie will study chemical engineering at the University of Wisconsin. Congratulations, Katie Zobrowski from White Bear Lake. <laughs> Anna Sortland from Woodbury earned All-American honors in swimming. She holds Woodbury's pool section records in the 200 medley relay, 100 breaststroke, and has been a state participant every year since being a freshman, including a third place in the 100 breaststroke. Her other honors include six-time letter winner, four-time all-conference, two-time all-state. She participates in the National Honor Society and Key Club, a member of her church youth group as well. She is a scholastic All-American. Anna will swim for Michigan State University. She is undecided right now on what she will study. Anna Sortland from Woodbury High School. And Kayla Walther from Concordia Academy, a member of the sixth place state tournament team in volleyball, an Aspire Athlete of the Week semifinalist, three-time letter winner in basketball, a member of the 1,000 Point Club, team MVP and South St. Paul All-Tournament team four times. Accomplishments in track include a school record, the four by 200 meter relay, three letters won in that sport. A member of choir, she's also taken two mission trips. Michaela is going to St. Scholastica to play basketball. She is undecided on what to study. Michaela Walther from Concordia Academy. <laughs> Paige Boyd from uh, Creighton Durham Hall. Paige was a Miss Hockey runner-up, Pioneer Press Player of the Year, All East Team, uh, Star Tribune, Metro second and third teams in her career, leading scorer of the SEC for two years as well. Earned three letters in that sport. Although not an MSHSL sport, she was a member of the USA Under-18 Gold Medal Championship team as well. Holds three letters in soccer, member of National Honor Society. Volunteer includes a blood drive, math tutor, and working in, in, in her church. An outstanding academic achievement award winner. Paige will play hockey, Division I hockey, at Merrimack College. She's still, as she says, rather, she is undecided on what she will study. Paige Boyd from Creighton Durham Hall. <laughs> Leah Patrick Hill Murray. Leah was twice the state champion in hockey on the all tournament team, MVP, captain with four letters won. In track, she has won two letters. In tennis, named rookie, in the, uh, rookie of the year. In lacrosse, participated one year. At school, she is in peer ministry, peer listening, and peer tutoring, volunteered at Feed My Starving Children. She's also worked with the Homeless Memorial March, at Shrine Catholic Work Camp, and Grace Place. She holds academic letters. She's on the AB Honor Roll, won the Science Wizard Award. What is the Science Wizard Award? Are you like a wizard? Oh, really? Okay. I'll just stand over here then. 
Excellence in French Award, World Language Star Student Award, and French Student of the Month. Leah will play hockey at Union College. She plans to be, to study rather, pre-med. Leah Patrick from Hill Murray High School. Morgan Emmons, Mounds Park Academy, holds many records in softball. Her batting average, I assume this is career batting average, 593. Most doubles, most triples, RBI leader, all-time hit leader in her school. Won the coach's award, four letters, three all-conference uh, award winner as well. Captain MVP and Defensive Player of the Year in basketball, four-time letter winner. She holds four letters in volleyball. Other school activities include ceramics and photography. She works with Habitat for Humanity and the Soderville Athletic Association. Now she will attend St. Cloud State University and she told me earlier today she plans to take my job because she's studying mass communications. Well, let me just tell you, Morgan, you can have it. <laughs> Morgan Emmons from Mounds Park Academy. <laughs> Valerie Hoho from New Life Academy has a, is a 1,000 point, 1,000 rebound winner in her basketball career, twice offensive MVP. She earned four letters in that sport. Her softball team, wow, good <laughs> lord. How tall are you? Six, that, no, you're not. Well, I have three inch heels. Oh, you're six, in, three. okay. 6'3 in heels, okay. <laughs> Her softball team was in the state tournament three times, selected to the all tournament team, six time letter winner, and two time all state. Treasurer of the Student Council and President of the National Honor Society. In addition, she takes part in school drama, tutoring, the school auction, and freshman mentoring. In the community, she participates in the blood drive, Sunday school teaching, and works with the child care, church child care. Valedictorian, AP Scholar with Honors, on the Dean's List, AP Chemistry Student of the Year, Distinguished Christian High School Student and Math Student of the Year, with a President's Education Award for Outstanding Academic Excellence. She will play softball at UMD and study Chemical Engineering. Congratulations, Valerie Ho from New Life Academy. Maria Tibisar from St. Agnes was the Offensive Player of the Year in Volleyball, MVP, four-time letter winner, all-conference honorable mention. In basketball, she is the all-time leading scorer at St. Agnes with over 1,100 career points, four-time letter winner. Softball, she's on the all-section team, pitcher of the year, rookie of the year, and she's a four-time letter winner. Has been in the spring musical all four years and a member of the concert choral and pro-life club. Academically, she's on the principal's list. I assume that's a good thing <laughs> to be on the principal's list and the honor roll. She will play volleyball at Rochester Community and Technico uh, Technical College and study nursing. Maria Tibisar from St. Agnes High School. Mary Nas from SPA Summit School. Mary, four times state participant in cross country, earning second and fifth place. She was the Pioneer Press Athlete of the Week and the holder of the school records in the four and the 5K, four time letter winner in that sport, twice co captain in track, holds the school record in the four by 800 meter relay, four time letter winner in that sport, a state qualifier for two years. She earned fourth place in the 1600 meters. Uh, she was co-captain of the Nordic Skiing Team with a varsity letter and voted most improved. Member of the, uh, the choir for three years, elected to the Junior Class Leadership Council. Outside of school, she's active in her church, uh, day camp and overnight camp, and is a weekly volunteer at the West 7th Community Center. In academics, she has been on first honor roll all four years in high school. She will go to Wellesley College and run cross country and track, and right now Mary is undecided on what she will study. Mary Nas from SPA Summit School. <laughs> Mary Enos from Trinity School at River Ridge is not here today. I'll just run through quickly her accomplishments. Captain of the soccer team, earning the Senior Excellence Award, three-time Leadership Award. She was a state participant in cross country and holds a two-time MVP award in that sport, basketball, two-time letter winner. She is uh, looking at attending the University of St. Thomas to pursue a degree in global health and Catholic studies. We wish she was here. Mary Enos from Trinity School at River Ridge. 
Kate Hallett from Visitation played on the St. Paul United Hockey Team, won the Hobie Baker Award, the Charlie Stryker Character Award, two-time MVP, a Rookie of the Year winner, four-time letter winner, three-time All-Conference, and twice named captain. Earned four letters, two All-Conference honorable mention, and Rookie of the Year in tennis for lacrosse, most improved, and holds one letter. President of the student body and leadership crew for three years, life club member, Eucharistic minister, and a member of service club, tutors elementary students at Mary's Place and is a Eucharistic minister in her church. For four years, she has been on the high honor roll with a GPA of 4.2. She won the Harvard Prize Book Award. Kate will play hockey at Harvard and study liberal arts and business. Kate Hallett, Hallett rather, from Visitation. Aaron Kennedy, St. Paul Central, state finalist three times and top 16 for swimming, section 4AA swimmer of the year, taking first place, six conference and six school records, section finalist four times in track, two-time letter winner, all conference and honorable mention. Besides sports, heavily involved in music. On the choir performance side, she is a member of the All-State Choir, Chamber Choir, Women's Small Choir, and a seven-voice a cappella group, which she founded and manages. She won superior rating four times at the Minnesota State High School League Vocal Solo Ensemble Contest. For directing, she directs the Women's Small Group, which had a superior rating at the Solo Ensemble Contest. Teaching assistant, accompanist for the Women's Choir class. She is all state in that, as you can imagine. Since 2007, in her neighborhood, she has written, directed, and produced 12 plays for children. Weekly, she's a volunteer uh, pianist for the Carondelet Senior Living. She is a state finalist for the AAA, uh, AAA Award, Excel Award nominee, National Merit Finalist, AP Scholar with Distinction, and U.S. President Scholar Candidate being in the top 10 of her class. She will go to Williams College to study music and math. Erin Kennedy from St. Paul Central High School. Kathleen Miles, Como Park, twice co-captain of the cross-country team, holds three letters and three-time all-conference, holds three letters in all-conference and track and field. Participated in volleyball, was co-captain of the seat of the C team in Nordic skiing. She earned one letter, and she's a member of the National Honor Society. Outside of school, uh, Kathleen volunteers at Minnesota History Center, Northdale Rec Center, and Seward Elementary and her church. She plans to go to Hamlin and is looking at studying history and or education uh, and or education as majors. Kathleen Miles is from Como Park. Congratulations. <laughs> Cynthia Walker, Harding, most improved in volleyball, three-time letter winner, basketball, three-time letter winner, all-conference honorable mention, track, three-time letter winner, all school, other school activities, African American Union, night crew leader, college possible, Southeast Asian Club and prom committee in the community. She's a Girl Scout and a caretaker at her church. Throughout her four years, she has been a member of the AB Honor Roll. Cynthia plans to major in nursing at Mankato State University. Cynthia Walker from Harding High School. <laughs> Molly McMahon, Highland Park. Pioneer Press and Star Tribune Athlete of the Week in Volleyball, Captain, three-time letter winner. Her team was twice conference champs. For hockey, she won the Hobie Baker Award, four-time letter winner, two-time all-conference honorable mention, and twice named Captain. She holds four letters in softball, two-time all-conference. A member of FFA and the prom committee, also a, a Feed My Starving Children volunteer. Academically, she's on the high honor roll this year. She wants to play volleyball, and she's undecided right now between the University of St. Thomas and Winona State. She plans to study exercise science. Molly McMahon from Highland Park. Keandra Stokes from Humboldt was the MVP in volleyball, three-time letter winner, two-time all-conference honorable mention. Basketball honors include most improved, most dedicated, three-time letter winner, and two-time all-conference honorable mention. She was a Snow Days Duchess and Homecoming Queen candidate, member of student council, prom committee. Her community volunteer activities include neighborhood house, food shelf, blood drive, and tech scholars mentor. She won the Harvard Prize Book Award and has earned high honors with distinction. 
Keandra will work as a certified nursing assistant while obtaining a nursing degree at the College of St. Ben's. Congratulations, Keandra Stokes from Humboldt. <laughs> Lauren Smith Johnson, third in the season scoring and fifth in career scoring at Johnson in basketball, scored over 1,000 points, earned four letters in that sport, three-time all-conference. In track and field, holds four letters and all-conference honorable mention. Other school activities include student council and link crew. Her volunteer activities include food drive, St. Joseph's Hospital gift shop, and a grocery bagger. How good are you at bagging groceries? Good for a couple hours. Good for a couple hours? <laughs> Me too, I did that. How much did you make, anything? We never really got the numbers. Oh. Our coach knows. Your coach knows. Okay, well good for you. Holds an academic letter, she's on the high uh, honor roll. Uh, Lauren wants to play basketball, major in physical therapy, although she's undecided right now between Iowa Lakes and Cloud County Junior Colleges. Lauren Smith out of Johnson High School. And last but not least, I hold the last winner in my hand, Yasmin Velez captain of both the soccer and basketball team at Washington Technology Magnet, holds two letters in both sports in softball, three-time letter winner. Her other school activities include Upward Bound Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, 3M STEP Internship, Washington Action Team, Washington Leadership Council, and Naval Junior ROTC. As part of that program, she has worked with Adopt a Highway and Feed My Starving Children. She's also been Student of the Month at Washington Technology. She plans to go into the Army and study medicine. Yasmin Velez, Washington Technology <laughs> Magazine. Why don't we give our winners one more round of applause and thank you very much for inviting me here today. Thank you, Randy. 19 years and counting he's been doing this. Thank you very much. At this time, I want to say thank you to everybody for coming. Again, at the back of the thing, if you want to get a hold of myself or a member of the committee, our uh, email is on here and my phone number is on here. ADs, don't forget the little plaque that you need to put on your, uh, plaques, your larger plaque back at school. And don't forget your posters, uh, winners, or ADs, whoever is in charge of those. And you're welcome to come up here, parents, if you want, and students to take pictures. Thank you for coming, and hope to see some of you again next year. Bye.